Feminism. Many of you have heard this word tossed around the internet a lot lately. And for many of you, it may be a word that makes you feel uncomfortable or even annoyed. In fact, it's been causing quite a discussion online. But if you look at the definition of feminism, this one's uh, by Oxford Dictionary, it says, the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of equality of the sexes. This sounds like a peaceful concept, advocacy and equality. However, many people these days are trying to distance themselves from feminism. This is due to the stereotype arising of the angry feminist, one that blindly shouts hate towards men and wants women to have more rights than men. Because there's more people distancing from themselves from this, how have the efforts of the suffragettes and so many other respectful uh, advocates through the years come to this? The internet allows uh, for excessive amount of information to be accessed and shared. This means that people with less involvement in the current initiatives and discussions of feminism to display their views without having to discuss with the other people that share that views or the other people that are part of that organization. But they can still perform this under the feminist label. Thus, these ideas that may not represent feminism are being are perceived to represent feminism. An example of this was a girl called Cassidy Boone. She released a video on the internet in which she described an incident where she dived into a pool, she hit her head on the floor, um, she was knocked unconscious and she was gonna drown. A man then jumped into the pool to save her. She then continues on the video to say that she wants to charge this man for rape as he touched her without her consent and because she was unconscious. Now, you see the dislikes on that video. Not a lot of people took it seriously. However, you have to understand that although these, what she was saying, people weren't supporting her, people still thought, because she identified as a feminist, that this was a feminist idea. It makes feminism look like they want this sort of thing. Now, this has created a lot of backlash on the internet, and we have meninism. Um, so, meninist came from this sort of response to these very extremist views, these as they felt threatened. Now, these often, if you watch the advocacy, it never releases new ideas. It never says how they can fix these problems or what problems are being discussed. It's often just a response to the problems that feminists are bringing up. Thus, it purely exists to oppose feminism. It purely exists to go against the movements and the things that are currently being moved towards. You may have also heard of um, something quite recently by an organization called Return of the Kings. And they tried to say that they could get rid of rape culture by making it legal. They tried to create these demonstrations in many countries all over the world. And again, despite it being a minority, I, the majority of people don't believe that rape should be legal. Because they have the ability to come together and to release these ideas that are quite extreme, there still were meetings made. People still organized, people still demonstrated to legalize rape. And there is still quite a lot of support on Twitter. And it's very easy to say these people are crazy People can't believe them, but as long as there's at least one person that believes them, there's always this risk for violence. There's always this risk to take down any sort of efforts for gender equality. So how can we get rid of these disturbances? How can we bring feminism back to its core and move more towards a more equal society? If you look at the core of feminism, it's because of these gendered stereotypes. It's because we've created a society in which men are above women in some instances and that men do one thing and women do another thing because of this preconceived sort of perception of ability. This is seen in many areas, such as in some countries, women unable to work, unable to leave the house, must stay home, take care of the kids, cook, clean. But at the same time, in a lot of cases, men aren't given custody over their children in a divorce case, despite the fact that they could be even more capable, because 
they're not seen as nurturing. Because women are the ones seen as nurturing and men are seen as the money makers. So it affects both genders. And we see this again as male rape not being taken seriously enough. A lot of male victims of rape are told, oh, you're not manly enough, or you're a man, you should have liked it. Women are also victim blamed and told that, that it was their responsibility, that they should have changed their views. because they, And they both go to this key idea that it's men are these sexual aggressors and women are submissive and therefore the male's pleasure. So, in order to get rid of all these problems for both men and women, it's dismantling the structure, it's dismantling the social view to create a more equal plane and a more equal idea of gender. So, Emma Watson says this very nicely when she spoke to the UN. She said, fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. This has to stop. For the record, feminism, by definition, is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunity. We have to stop this stigma. We have to have, if we stop the stigma, more people can stand up and we can have more movements to create these, um, a more gender equal society. We can no longer be afraid of feminism or feminists. We can no longer engage people who want to spread violence. We have to filter through this massive information so that we can determine the people who want equality and the people who want superiority, the people who want rights, and the people who want privilege. We have to clear these disruptions in the road to feminism to create equality that properly displays the views of feminism. Thank you. <laughs>